Avoiding Plagiarism, presented by the Academic Resource Center. Plagiarism is often an issue for college students because it's easy to accidentally do, and the consequences are often severe. Plagiarism is the accidental or intentional passing of ideas as one's own. In other words, using someone else's thoughts, theories, or wording without alerting others that they are not your own. It is also known as intellectual theft. It's important to avoid plagiarizing for many reasons. It makes it more difficult to argue things on your own, which is part of the learning you're meant to pick up in college. Outside of college, it is theft, and you can have charges brought against you for it, which is why professors consider it a serious issue. And, why intentional repeated plagiarism can result in expulsion. This is also why it's considered unethical. Common types of plagiarism include working with someone you don't credit or doing someone else's work for them without credit, self-plagiarism, intentional plagiarism, and unintentional plagiarism. Letting others write parts of your paper or writing part of someone else's paper for them is plagiarism. It is using ideas and words that are not your own. If you decide to help out your friend and write even just part of a paragraph for him or change some of the language he is using in his paper, this is plagiarism and you are both equally responsible. The same is true if he helps you on your paper. Using old work for a new assignment is also plagiarism. If you write a paper for a history class and decide to use it in your composition class, it is the theft of ideas from your previous work. The thoughts, theories, and wording in it are not original to the new assignment. Think about the reasons that plagiarism is a problem. We looked at them earlier. Why might recycling old ideas be plagiarism? Intentional plagiarism is the purposeful use of an intellectual property that is not your own and attempting it to pass off as your own. It is the most serious kind of plagiarism and has the largest consequences. Copying work from someone, buying papers, using parts of others' work mixed in with your own with the intent to hide that it is not yours, and publishing other work, others' work without their express permission is all intentional plagiarism. Intentional plagiarism happens when there is a dead line coming or when the work seems overwhelming usually. Even if you change some wording or plan to use the piece as a placeholder until you can do the work yourself, using someone else's intellectual property and pretending it is yours is plagiarism. Think about the reasons that plagiarism is a problem. We looked at them earlier. What types of consequences might you face for intentional plagiarism? Unintentional plagiarism is the accidental use of others' ideas. It happens in the writing process. It's forgetting to credit, crediting incorrectly, or not understanding how to paraphrase, summarize, or quote things properly. People often copy and paste things into their paper that they intend to credit later, but forget to return in credit. The issue with this is that it's difficult for a professor not to know if it was done intentionally or not. Remember, plagiarism is the theft of intellectual property. It can prevent you from learning how to argue for yourself and can result in anything from the assignment given a zero to suspension, expulsion, or charges pressed against you. Having properly credited sources for the ideas in your paper makes you more credible 
and makes it obvious which ideas are the ideas of others and not your own and allows your audience to find the resources and those ideas for themselves. Using direct quotes, paraphrasing, and summarization correctly with proper citation are the best ways to avoid plagiarism. Using quotes correctly means using the exact wording from the source and placing them in quotation marks with citation letting people know where it came from. Using too many direct quotes, specifically big blocks of quotes, won't leave room for your own thoughts and should be avoided. Remember, if you don't cite the direct quote or put it in quotation marks, no matter how well done, it is plagiarism. Paraphrasing is removing the di direct wording from a quote and just using the idea contained within by restating it in your own words. It should have no quote marks around it. Using the kind of language you usually rely on and only relaying main ideas is the best way to paraphrase. Remember, it must still have a citation for it not to be plagiarism. And if it has any direct wording in it, it is still plagiarism. Summarizing is much like paraphrasing, but it is used for large portions of text. It must still contain no direct wording or quotation marks and must be cited. Citing a source simply means using a few key words as outlined by MLA or APA to point your readers to your work's cited page where they can locate all of the important information about the work you used the ideas from. This lets people find the sources themselves if they need to. Common knowledge are facts that most people know and don't require sources. However, what is and is not common knowledge is sometimes difficult to determine. For example, George Washington did not have wooden dentures, as many believe, but did have dentures made of elk and deer teeth. When in doubt, of whether something is common knowledge or not, it's best to cite it. When it comes to plagiarism, it can be tough to know what to do. Remembering to always credit a source is the number one way to avoid it. If you need assistance with knowing if you've plagiarized, your professor can help, or you can visit the Academic Resource Center for time with a writing tutor.